Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have an opportunity to work on a reel that's almost as old as I am. Wow, that doesn't happen frequently. Well, this one is a Shakespeare True Blue 1956. Well, that's the model number 1956. But interestingly enough, it was actually made in 1956 as well. Because if you look at the model down here, FE, corresponds to the Shakespeare dating code and the F is a 5 the E is a 6 and uh, that actually says that this model 1956 was made in 1956 well Shakespeare used to get in trouble with uh, using kind of dates there's uh, some very old reels that I have that are, are Shakespeare reels that uh, while well, they were dated in 1924 or 1925 this would be an example of one of those and uh, this one was dated this is the 1918 model from the Shakespeare well one of the problems that Shakespeare ran into was that the models that were not sold in that year and they used to date them by year kind of were viewed as old stock and when the depression came they had a lot of reels that were kind of backlogged because people uh, stopped buying reels for economic reasons and uh, well they switched over to date coding uh, using these letters as the, the true so you might find something that's called the 1956 that might have a date code of 57 or 58 or 59 in them and that was a way for them to preserve the value of the reel without it depreciating because of the, the difference between the year that it was noted on the reel and the year that it was actually sold. A little bit of trivia. Well, if you like those kinds of things, if you like the art of reel repair, if you like to see how reels are serviced, how they uh, were made, how they come apart, how they get cleaned up and put back together again, well, this channel's for you. And I would recommend that you subscribe to the channel. If you do subscribe to the channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting videos and well, you can see if you like that or not. This one, what you can see on this reel is it's very dirty. Uh, it turns pretty hard. Yeah, I mean, you can turn it, but uh, when you're buying one of these reels, you want to look for a couple of things if you like the older reels. One of the things, check the handles. They get very brittle. They crack or sometimes they don't turn. <clears throat> this one's loose, but that can be corrected. You'll notice the dirt condition of this. There's dirt everywhere. This was obviously in some kind of storage somewhere. This one was found at a flea market, but I don't think the flea market is the reason all of this dirt is just here. But at any rate, we're gonna show you how to take it apart and clean it up. It's a relatively simple reel. And if you'd like to, uh, to try your hand at servicing, start with these. These follow the prescription that, uh, well, everybody asks me, you know, what's the difference between fishing reels? And a lot of times I say there really isn't that much of a difference. A big gear turns a little gear, turns something to collect the line, whether it's a, uh, a rotor turning on a fixed spool or whether it's a spool turning on a, uh, a frame like this. And that's the basic premise of a reel. And uh, well, once you get that down, you can pretty much figure out the rest. All right, I've removed the cap. You can do this two ways. There is a a screw slot here for a flat bladed screwdriver or you can use a nut driver one of the things you want to note on these older reels like the Shakespeare is it was made in the US and it was made before tools were converted from the, the SAE uh, US threading to the metric threading so if you're working on these expect to see a need if you find a nut a need for a US like a quarter inch driver rather than a metric one. When you take the time to clean a reel, make sure that, uh, well, you just spend enough time to, to make it all work right. There's no sense just rushing through things and, uh, well, having it mechanically perfect and cosmetically wanting because you didn't, uh, didn't take that extra minute or two to clean it up. I use a variety of things to clean the reels. I use cotton swabs. You saw me a little bit before using that as an example and why this is uh, got the dirt on it. But I also use uh, some kitchen scrubbies, some mild abrasive. I use a rod and reel cleaner if I need to. I also use a penetrating oil as uh, that will help dissolve dirt and the like. And I uh, will use, which you saw that last piece, just a little piece of 
for a while it's a very very fine steel wall and I'll use that when things are a little stubborn. There's two screws that are holding these reels on. When I work on these reels I must feel like a jeweler. Uh, the early reels in design and manufacture oftentimes came from clock makers and jewelers. And uh, well, you can see why the, the parts are pretty intricate. It's got a mechanical design to it that would be like a clockwork. And uh, well, they just have that, that certain something to them. This, I believe, is polished aluminum, but it could be uh, uh, German silvered in the, um, the finish. Some of them are. All right, we should be able to remove this piece now. Well, the whole piece is coming out. This is very stiff, and it's probably one of the reasons why this is, is stiff, is that, well, you can see there's no, no lubrication going on with this thing whatsoever. And, uh, well, you know what? As much as I like the original Dacron line on this, I think what I'm going to do is take this off. Now, if you wanted to put it on a shelf as a collector, leave it on, but I would much rather clean this reel up and give it a second chance. I'm going to turn the, the uh, video off for a moment and take the line off. I'm also going to take a moment here to spray the case. We, we noted how dirty it was. I'm going to take some penetrating oil to dissolve a lot of that old dirt there. It's a good cleaner. We'll just let it sit while I go take the line off the spool. And people ask me if I have any fancy way to take the line off the spool. The answer is absolutely not. It's just a hand over hand unwinding until it uh, comes off. And generally I'll put this into a cardboard box so that it doesn't get scraped up um, by any other surface. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, well this just shows that braided line is nothing new. This braided line was probably on there since the 50s. One of the things that was interesting with this one, they used different color thread. So you can actually see how the braid was um, kind of woven there. And, uh, well, one of the first, uh, they would do braiding, that kind of thing. Uh, used uh, linen in the Dacron as a means to do that. All right, I'm just going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to soak that spool for a moment. Remember what we said, big gear drives little gear. This, this is the little gear. It's actually attached right to the spool. All right, let's do some cleanup here. And while we do the cleanup, maybe I'll share with you some other things. One of those is I, I'm always open to answering questions. So if you have a question on this reel, or any reel, just uh, leave them in the comment section and I will try to answer them for you. You can see how that, uh, that penetrating oil has just dissolved pretty much all the dirt there. I used a lot of paper towels. I don't like using cloth rags because they just tend to transfer the dirt from one project to the next. So I, I try to do away with that. Let's see if we can't unhook here. This is kind of a Shakespeare feature has a little question mark hook that's holding that, that piece in. It should swing out. You can find that on the modern day reels. And then we should be able to pull this back and through. I'm not going to take it all the way off, but uh, that'll give me enough room there to get the old dirt and greases out of the, the carrier. If you go the other way, generally speaking, you'll, you'll be able to work it out there as well. Okay, very good. If you needed to remove it, well, I guess we can show you that. There's a little screw here that's holding the cap on that's holding the paw. Sometimes you get a little uh, anxious when you do this because on the old wheels, if they've been used in a salt water environment, these screws tend to seize in there. And when they seize in there, you tend to uh, lose it. This is your paw. It's good that we took it out because there is dirt in here. You want to make sure that your shoulders are clean on the pole and that the pole has good points on it. When I take my pieces and parts off, I put those into a parts tray. That parts tray enables me to keep track of them for when it's time to reinstall. Now we've removed the worm gear. And we'll remove the line guide so that we can mop up that little bit extra in the back here. Well, William Shakespeare is not the uh, not the fellow that uh, wrote all the plays, but William Shakespeare from Kalamazoo, Michigan, started making these fishing reels in the late 1800s. And he's generally credited 
with the line guide mechanism. And Shakespeare found a, uh, a way to wrap the line based on how they were wrapping line on sewing machine bobbins, the threads. And he uh, adapted that to fishing reels and pretty much came up with the whole notion of a level line fishing reel where you didn't need your educated thumb to, uh, to wind the reel. Okay, just a little bit more cleanup. Again, you don't get points for, for racing through fishing reel service. You really get points for how well it performs. And particularly if it's a reel of your own, and this one happens to be one of mine. I found it at a, a flea market for a few dollars because it wasn't working very well. And uh, the fella said, well, if you want to put it on the shelf, show people what a reel used to be like. And I said, you know what, I'd rather take it fishing. So here we are. We're going to try and get this to the point where I can take it fishing. This is one of those reels that uh, was around, as I mentioned. It's almost as old as I am. And, uh, well, it was around when I learned how to fish. Never really learned how to cast this one too well. And being by the ocean, I tended to spend more time with ocean equipment than with freshwater equipment. But uh, that's probably a story for another day. All of the materials in here are so well done. Such a nice, sturdy reel. This one will last another. 65 years or so, whatever the, the math is on where it is at this stage of its existence. Okay, here's your worm drive. A little more cleaning up on the line guide. Looks good. Let's go ahead and put this back together. There is a slot in the cross arm here that eventually you're going to want to merge that into. There is a rounded edge on the one side and a kind of rectangular edge on the other side. So we're going to put a little bit of grease onto the rounded edge. I didn't get too much, but work that off. I do wear a glove to keep most of that grease off of my hands. Insert through the hole. And insert it into the line guide. Dip the line guide down so that you can get the tip into that slot. Push it over. Now we go back to our, our little carrier here that's got the, the pole that we cleaned. The pole can go in next. If you can, turn the line guide to make sure that the pole seats. I just did that. It probably doesn't show very well, but I made a quarter of a turn with it and it did fall into the groove. If you don't get it into the groove, it's going to jam. It'll be like a vise. Go back into my parts tray now. Get my last uh, screw for that assemb assembly. These are small screws. You might want to use a little glue. The glue being a, uh, a dab of grease to hold that screw to help you get it started. Got it started, so let's tighten that down. So a lot of the fishing reel repair for these simple reels is all about the cleaning, the lubrication, the examination of the parts, make sure that they're um, not damaged. If they are damaged, they're gonna need to be replaced. And why am I taking this out? Well, I just noticed that the, the little tie-down piece fell out when I Turned it to this side. So that's not going to hold the ball in place. So time to go put it back that way. One of the things that's nice when you're doing your reels is you're allowed do-overs. So take your time. If something isn't seating properly, if you feel like something is just kind of a little bit awry, something's jamming, don't, don't keep forcing it. Do it over. All right. Try my little glue trick one more time. Me and little screws don't play play well together. But I think we got it this time. We got the lock on. We got it nice and clean. And for a $5 flea market find, I can't wait to put this on a pole. Take your little lever and swap that back in. Close that down. I think 
we got it. I just want to make sure. There we go. And then take the, the gear, mount that. And I don't put grease on to the worm drive. You saw all that dirt and everything that collected in here. One of the problems that you have with a worm drive is if you put that there, it's going to collect a lot of dirt and grease and start becoming abrasive. This one's one of the simpler wheels to work on. Like I said, it was very hard to turn this. And we can see why it's, it's that grease that I was using before as a glue, if you will, is gluing this into the assembly. So you want to push that up. There's a center pin. And you can just feel how, uh, well, that grease right there, all of the dirt and the film and the like on the inside of the case. And then it's going to be dirt on that main shaft as well. Well, a little trick with that WD-40 again. We're just going to sit that there. Take a picture. <laughs> as easy as it is to say this is a simple rule, it's easy as well to mess it up. Well, we want to remove that axle because we want to clean that shaft. And you can, uh, you can put these on backwards or inside out or upside down. Trust me, uh, I've seen enough pieces come into me in all kinds of states of assembly that well, they weren't natural to the design of the reel. That's because we forgot. Pictures help us to identify how these went on. And uh, well, they'll certainly help when you go to reinstall. All right, I just used that uh, steel wall to clean this up. There's a beautiful piece of machined um, product here. All right, a little bit of grease onto that spool. Next up is the small drive. Seat that in. Just going to use the steel wall to buff off some of the content here. Inspect the teeth on these. Make sure that they're all clean and they're not jammed. These are clean. Install the main gear. And I, if I put some grease on that shaft, it's gone now. <laughs> I just wiped it on my hand. And then let's go over and clean the other side. This may seem elementary, but it makes all the difference in the world. We couldn't turn this before, or we struggled to turn it before. I have no doubt this will clean up. I'm going to put this on a well, a modern pole. I don't have an older metal pole or anything from the earlys with the fiberglass and that. But put it on a modern pole and take a casting with me. One of the things you did not see in this reel is any kind of anti-reverse, any kind of click mechanism. You saw a click mechanism for the bait alarm on the other side, but you didn't see anything on this side that overly complicated this reel. Sometimes there's pleasure in simplicity. All right, a little bit of grease into that slot there. That's the back end of the case. This is an adjustable uh, nut. Actually, we can take that off and clean the outside of the case while we're at it, because I'm noticing we got some dirt here. So Shakespeare was in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Shakespeare was one of the early manufacturers. Some of his competition at the time was Fluger. Ernest Fluger and his sons made fishing reels. And uh, Shakespeare also made a host of reels that were called trade reels. They were manufactured by Shakespeare, but they bore other names. And interestingly enough, reels like this, well, you'll find South Bend on them. So a lot of the South Bend reels were manufactured by Shakespeare's company. And you'll also find uh, some other ones that are out there. If they're marked Kalamazoo, chances are they were made by the Shakespeare company, even though it may say something else as the brand name. Okay, I just wanted to reinstall that. Let's take that gearing and put that through. Yeah, I did want to run that. Yeah, 
I thought I that all of that came through that shaft there. I wanted to make sure that was clean. A little drop of oil in there wouldn't hurt either. This, this dirt's probably been around a long time. Again, I don't know why this one wound up on the shelf, but it certainly did. And it uh, wound up for sale because, well, it just wasn't working very well any longer. And uh, luckily I came, along, I came along to be able to give it a second chance. There's still some dirt on here. Stubborn kind of stuff, huh? All right, beautiful handle. It's, it's uh, plastic or possibly Bakelite. Bakelite was a type of a plastic used in the Art Deco years. I think by now we were probably into plastic. It said 56 was the date on the reel. All right, tighten that down. You can give it a try right now. Ha, oh, what a difference, right? So if I can turn it like that, you can imagine how it's gonna turn the reel when we needed two hands before. Here's that uh, WD-40. Clean the spool right up. So we took that uh, line off. We do have a little bit here. Remember what I was saying? We have a uh, kitchen scrubby and that rod and reel cleaner. Let's just uh, use that a little bit here. We don't want to scar this spool up. But I think I did well for my purchase and I can't wait to put some line on this and uh, take it out to the local pond and see how I do. I always give people that uh, give you quite a look when you're throwing a reel like this. It's like, what in the world is that? Where did it come from? And, uh, well, you have nothing else. you got a story to tell. All right. You can reinsert that in. Make sure that it seats into the other side here. We have two adjuster caps. Didn't clean that side yet. I guess we'll get there in a moment. Let's go ahead and grab the case. Now, what you want to do here, this outside of this big gear is going to be driving this line guide, so you want to be careful as you go to reinstall. I do notice I have a little bit of cotton left over from that cotton swab. So line that up, and generally a good way to tell when that's going to be in the line is look for the hole for the screw. This is only held on by two screws. When you align those screw holes, you should be able to make this work. There we go. Two screws go in. And we're getting close to the end of this one. I do want to clean the other side of the case. We want to make some adjustments. This one has an adjuster on both sides of the spool. That's for two things. One is for spool tension. That's going to limit the travel of the spool in terms of speed. And the other is it's going to center the spool. So sometimes you'll have a reel like this and you'll hear chirping. And the chirping is generally the metal spool hitting the side frame. And that can usually be eliminated by loosening up one of those tension sides. You gotta find out what side I guess is hitting. But if you loosen one side of the tension cap and you tighten down the other, that will move the centering of the spool. And that'll help you. Let's take this one off like we did the other one. We did put some grease in before, but we want to clean around there again. And again, a kitchen scrubby to me has got just enough abrasion on it without scarring or hurting the, the finish on the reel. It'd be a shame to have a reel of this age and then go around and make sure that. Uh, Use something abrasive and then scar it up. Well, look at the design and how nicely that's all cleaned up there. The only thing we didn't do is a drop of oil onto the, the two handles. You can do that. And then let's, uh, let's give it a test. Well, what can I say? What can I say? It turns free and easy, no chirping. Nothing going on. This is what's called a knuckle buster reel. There is no anti-reverse when you go to cast. Well, the reel is just going to spin backwards, and if your hand is in the way, you're going to get hit in the knuckles. That can happen like this, right? If you're casting, you got to watch. But it'll spin backwards as you cast, forward for that. There is no drag. You notice that on this, on this uh, reel as well. There were no drag washers. 
Uh, how do you fight a fish when it's uh, taking off? You just hold pressure on the handle and you go with the fish. You let the line out, going with it, but enough tension that you don't uh, release the fish or let it just run wild. That's it. This is it. This is our Shakespeare True Blue 1956, made in 1956. And uh, well, it's a beautiful fishing reel. I hope you have the opportunity to find a, a bargain like this out there in the, the flea markets, the yard sales, or eBay's, or Craigslist's, or wherever you may be looking. And uh, if you do, take the time to, uh, to try and give it a second chance. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thanking our first responders and essential personnel. I really appreciate your dedication to public safety. And to everyone, I wish you well, great times on the water, and fantastic fishing. Have a great day.